So we're going to look now at nodal analysis. So nodal analysis is a way to analyse a structure where you've got several members connected by what we call nodes. So a framed structure um, to have several members and several nodes. And it's all about analysing one node at a time to look at the forces acting on the actual structure as a whole. So from that five, you'll know that we've got two main types of force acting on members. So our first one, the one at the top, um, we've got the external forces pushing in, squashing our member, this bit here being the member. So this would be in compression. And then we've got another member here, so member at the bottom. And the external forces for that are pulling it away or stretching it, which means this is in tension. So we've got compression and tension. Now, in frame structures, you'll have a combination of members that are in tension and in, in compression. And then all together, um, they'll make a, a, a strong structure. So our member that's in compression and higher, we would refer to those members as struts. And the member in tension, we refer to as a tie. So we talk about in our structure, our members being struts and ties. And that's us making assumptions and saying, this one, member A, is in compression, so it's a strut. Member B is in tension, so it is a tie. Now, these are really important. When we come to do frame structure analysis, using your nodal analysis, we need to be able to think about the structure as a whole and whether each member is a strut or a tie. And we're assuming our nature. So we talk about the magnitude and direction of forces, for members in nodal analysis, we talk about magnitude and nature. So what is the size of the force in each member and what is the nature? Is it a strut or is it a tie? Now, if we look at our member that's in compression or strut, the external forces are pushing in on it. So that's why we know it's compression, because it's being squashed. But what we're doing for nodal analysis is analysing the internal forces. So what force is acting in that member of the beam. So if we've got a strut that's in compression, the internal forces for this member have to push back out of the way. So we know that every force has got equal and opposite reaction forces. So in order to stop my structure collapsing, this member will have internal forces pushing out or pushing towards the nodes. And that's to balance out those compressive forces. Same for the tension, the external forces are pulling out the way, so to keep it balanced and intact, our internal forces that we're working out will pull in the way, they'll pull away from the nodes in order to keep the structure steady. So let's take a look at a frame structure. So here we've got a symmetrical frame structure made up by three triangles and we've got five nodes which have labelled A to E. So each of these nodes, so this would be a node here, 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 and here. So where they, those members are meeting is what we call the node. And by doing nodal analysis, we're going to take one at a time and then work out what all the forces are acting on this system. So we'll add on some forces. So let's say we've got 100 newtons acting down at node B and at node D, and we've got reaction forces at A for 100 and E for 100. So we know these are all equilateral triangles, so it's a symmetrical shape. We've got 200 newtons acting down, meaning we must have 200 acting up the way as well to balance it. So we've got these are what we call external forces, and we're wanting to now know what is the force in member AB, member AC, and so on. So what are all these internal forces on our system and by doing that we can then work out well there's lots of force on one of the members so a structural engineer would then be able to take steps to make sure the system doesn't fail make sure that it's really strong so nodal analysis we're going to look at one node at a time and you're always going to start with somewhere with the most information but the first thing we need to do is we need to assume our struts and our ties so if we look at our structure, let's look at member AB. 
the external forces are pushing in on that beam. So we can assume that to balance that out, those are compression forces on AB. Therefore, to balance it out, the internal forces for that must be going towards the node or pushing out the way to make sure that that's balanced. Then we'll look at AC and we can see, well, the external force is pushing up the way, so that's not, neither squashing or stretching member AC. But we do have a force going here that's pushing left to this node. So balancing that, we'll say that's probably in tension, so they are going to pull in the way. It's symmetrical, so we can add them on to DE and CE as well. And then having a wee think about the rest of them, this is probably going to be in tension. So we assume that that's a tie. And then we'll say that's probably a tie as well. Now, at this point, we're making a 50-50 guess. You can look at it and say, well, if that member disappeared, what would happen to the rest of the structure? So if member AB was taken away, this would squash down, which means this is definitely going to be a strut. But for the ones in the middle and some of the other ones, it's harder to work it out. But it's okay, just have a guess. Because if we get the wrong direction, then all we'll get is a negative answer, which tells us that we were wrong. So if you're not really sure, it doesn't really matter at this point. So have a wee educated guess and then go from there. So we're now going to look at node A. So if I draw a circle around A and say this is the node I'm now going to analyse, we're going to redraw it. Now, tell your examiner what node you're working on by labelling it. So node A. And we're going to redraw that node. So here's my node A. We've got 100 newtons going up the way. We'll call this FAB because it's the force in the member AB. And that's going down. And we've also got... FAC going to the right and my angle of 60 degrees. So now we've got something that should be familiar to you. We have got a node in the middle and some forces acting on that. So same as we've done with resolution of forces, all we're doing is our vertical and our horizontal forces to work out our unknowns. So let's start with the vertical because the first thing that we know is a vertical force. So if we start with that, then we're going to be able to work it out. So we've got 100 newtons going up the way. Again, vertical force, we can just leave it as 100, or you can say 100 sine 90, which would just be 100 times 1. So 100 going up. We've got FAB going down, so that's a negative. So minus FAB, and that member, that is an, at an angle of 60. So FAB sine 60 going down the way. We're ignoring FAC because our angle from the horizontal is zero and sine zero is zero. Or we can say, well, it's a horizontal member, so it's not going to be involved in the verticals. So FAB going down at an angle of 60 and 100 going up. And then we put all of that equal to zero. Then rearrange we want FAB sine 60 on the left to make that positive, which equals 100. Divide both sides by sine 60. So that gives us an answer of 115. And then Newtons. Now we've got a positive answer here, which means that the nature that we assumed it was is correct. So we said that the internal forces were going towards the node, or pushing out the way, which meant that it's a strut. So we've got a positive answer. So same as we do with your, your forces and your reactions, we write down what our nature is. So we've said it's 150 newtons and it's a strut. And in an exam, your size would be one mark and your nature would be another mark. So next we're going to look at our horizontals, same as we do normally. So sum of our horizontal force is equal to zero. Everything to the right is positive. So let's look at our node, at node A again. So we've got the 100 newtons, that's a vertical force. So we can ignore that, that doesn't have 
a horizontal component, or you could look at it and say cos 90, and cos 90 is equal to 0, so it's 100 times 0, which is why we ignore that one. Now we've got FAC, we know that that's a horizontal member, and it's going to the right. So there's no angle for this, so we've just got FAC for the force and member AC. Then FAB is going down and left at an angle of 60, so it's going left, which makes it a negative. And then we've got FAB cos 60 equals 0. And again, we'll take the FAB over the other side, which makes it positive. So FAB times cos 60, we know FAB is 115, so we'll sub that in, multiply it by cos 60 which gives us an answer for FAC, which is 57.5 newtons. Again, we have a positive answer, which means that the nature that we assumed it was is correct. Now, we thought it was pulling away from the node, or the internal forces pulling in towards the middle, which meant we assumed it was a tie. That was correct. So again, we write down our nature, so we get one mark for our answer and one mark for our nature. And that's us finished with node A. So now we know the internal force in AB is 115 and the internal force in AC is 57.5. Next we need to look for our next node. Now generally in the SQA they'll give you certain members to find. They're not going to ask you to find all of them because once you've demonstrated that you know how to use the Nodes analysis system, then they won't ask you to keep on doing the same thing. But let's have a look and see what we can do next. Now, if we look at node B, we're trying to think about this as a node, and do we have enough information to work through it? So we know AB, so we know the for this force here, because we've just worked that out. We've got 100 newtons going down. We don't know BD, and we don't know BC. So we've got two unknowns, but one of those unknowns is a horizontal. So if we do the verticals, we've only got one unknown, which is BC. So we can start with B. Then if we look at C, we've got AC, we know. We don't know BC, we don't know CD, and we don't know CE. So we're definitely not going to be able to go there next. We could go over and do E, because we've got, same as we started off with here, one unknown with a vertical and a horizontal, and one horizontal. So let's start with B next. Again, draw your circle around the nodes, including the arrows on that side, and then tell the examiner where we're going. So node B. And then we can redraw that node. So again, put in all of your forces for node B. Now, some of the angles might not be explicit, but remember, we always want our angle to the horizontal, and don't forget your Z angles. So if we know that this is 60 down here, and we've got our Z shape there, then we're going to have 60 at the top. So BC is going to be 60 from the horizontal. And then M, same with FAB, we've got Z angles there. So we know that that's also going to be 60 from the horizontal. So make sure you've got all that information on your redrawn nodes, and then we're ready to start doing calculations. Now we know FAB, so good idea to pop that in a bracket beside it, to say, well, you know what that is. We've already established that it's definitely a strut, which means our arrow that we've got there is correct, because our strut goes towards the node, it's pushing against the node to hold it together. So now we can start looking at our verticals. Okay, so there's our vertical components. So we have 100 newtons going down, not at an angle, so it's just on its own. FAB, sine 60, going up the way, because it's at an angle of 60, so sine 60. And then minus FBC, sine 60, because that's going down and to the right, all equal to zero. We can sub in our value for FAB, and let's take FBC over to the other side, so we can get that to a positive. So FBC, sine 60, equals minus 100, plus 115 times sine 60. Now, what we're seeing here is 115 times sine 60 is 99.6. 
actually if we'd used our unrounded answer from here, what we would find is that this 115 times sine 60 is actually 100. So what we're ending up with here is zero, which tells us the FBC is actually equal to zero newtons, which is a special case called a redundant member. So redundant members in structures like this um, are quite common. And what you'll find is that a redundant member is there so that if there's a failure, let's say member AB has some sort of failure during manufacturing and it fails, then member BC currently, as it stands, has no force in it. It's not needed to make the system balanced. But if FAB failed, then FBC could take up some of that force. So it's there as a safety backup. And when we do the materials unit, we'll learn a wee bit more about redundant members. Okay, so let's carry on and look at our horizontals for node B. So now we know FBC is actually zero, so we can just ignore that. It's a redundant member. It's not actually required. So we've got the sum of all of our horizontal forces equal to zero. Everything to the right is positive. FAB at an angle of 60, horizontal factor is cos. So FAB times cos 60, and then that's going to the right. And then we've also got FBD, which doesn't have an angle, and we've assumed that that's also going to the right, all equal to zero. So FBD is going to equal minus 115 times cos 60, which is going to give us minus 57.5 newtons. Now, obviously, we don't want a negative force. A negative force isn't really a thing. So what that tells us is that our direction or our nature that we assumed for FBD was incorrect. So in our diagram, if we look back at the original one, we said that the internal forces were pulling into the middle or pulling away from the road, meaning we thought that this was a tie. We've got a negative answer, which tells us we were wrong. So all we need to do now in our answer is say FBD equals 57.5 newtons and it is in fact a strut. So if we've only got two things like this, two forces here and here, then we don't need to redo the calculation. Sometimes if you've got quite a lot going on, like something like this one here, it's a good idea just to go back through and redo your calculations to make sure that it's fine. But in this case, we've only got two things, so therefore it's the same number and it's just the opposite, so it's actually a strut. So you could then keep going round the members. So we'd maybe do node E next to get DE and CE, and then go up to node D to give us a remaining one, which is CD. But as I said, generally the SQA will get you to do two nodes so that you're demonstrating the skill through a couple of them without repeating it over and over again.